Welcome to Sage Audio. Today let's cover how to use FabFilter Saturn 2. But first, if you have a mix that you need to have mastered, send it to us to receive a free mastered sample of it with the link in the description. Understanding its EQ and harmonics. Instead of just doing an overview of the plugin, I really want to start from the most basic and fundamental aspects and build on that. So, by the end of the video, you should understand how to accomplish a lot of different things with it. So let's start by examining the various distortion types to see what they do. With an EQ curve analyzer, we can see that different distortions have different preset EQ curves. For example, clean tube adds a little to the lows, but has a more significant boost in the high end. Warm tape, on the other hand, boosts the lows more significantly, has a bell around 1200Hz and 14kHz, before cutting off the highest frequencies. Now, as you'd imagine, amp emulations will create much more drastic changes to the frequency response. If we run a sine wave through the processor and examine the output with an analyzer, we'll notice each setting creates different harmonic formations. For example, clean tape will create significant odd ordered harmonics, whereas subtle tape creates the same formation but with lower amplitude harmonics. Tube settings will create both even and odd harmonics, meaning that they'll create a fuller sound due to the added frequencies. Transformers do the same, but will create a slightly brighter sound due to the additional high-ordered harmonics. Now, I can't cover every setting, but do some testing if you're curious, and when in doubt, just use your ears. Let's take a listen to some of the various distortion types and note how they alter the sound. Understanding how it compresses. Let's quickly look at how Saturn 2 compresses a signal. If we pull up Plugin Doctor, we can observe how each saturation type alters the ratio, knee, and threshold of compression. These thresholds also change depending on the frequency due to the pre-emphasis EQ that we covered last chapter. Another thing to consider is the dynamic style. If we increase it, we'll notice that the peak down compression stays the same, but the overall level of quieter levels is increased. Conversely, if we were to lower it, we get an expansion effect in which quieter signals are attenuated, but then amplified. So keep in mind how increasing the drive dial and varying the dynamics will affect the overall dynamic range of your signal. Let's take a listen to these parameters being affected and notice how higher drive at a subtle tube setting compresses less than when we use a warm tube setting. If you're enjoying the video, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It's free and it helps us bring you more videos. Intro to Saturn's modulation. Modulation is really what makes this plugin special. Now Saturn has six different types of modulation that you could introduce. The slider is probably the simplest. If we attach it to a function, in this case the drive dial, a window pops up that lets us determine how much the slider's value will affect this particular function. Now with the positive or negative icon, we can make the slider's value increase the drive dial's value or decrease it. So let's say that I want the drive to increase, but I want the dynamic style to decrease simultaneously. I'll attach it to the drive with a positive value and to the dynamics with a negative value. Quick side note here, I wanted to be able to control this with MIDI modulation, however, I could only get it to work when I was using Saturn 2 as a MIDI effect, not when it was inserted as a plugin. So let's cover the other four functions in future chapters, but first, let's introduce modulation with this slider. Affecting transients with envelope followers. Envelope followers are probably what I use most with this plugin. They measure the incoming signal and can be used to modulate various functions accordingly. For example, say I want to saturate my drum bus, but I want the transients to be more distorted to give the instrument some impact. First, I'd create an envelope follower in the modulation window, then I'd switch the type from envelope to transient. I'd keep the trigger as the regular input, but I do have the option to affect it with an external sidechain signal. I could then determine the timing of the measurement, so let's measure the transient as quickly as possible and then give it a 0.1 second release. If I've attached it to my drive dial and play the track, we'll notice how the distortion is increased whenever a transient occurs. 
As you'd imagine, you could link this to any other parameter. So say I want to only distort the highs when a transient hits, I could first isolate the saturation to higher frequencies and if I wanted, attach the envelope follower to the frequency crossover to increase or decrease the frequency range at which distortion occurs. Again, according to the incoming signal. So let's take a listen to saturation added to some drums with an envelope follower attached to multiple parameters. Controlling ADSR with Envelope Generator. An envelope generator is similar to the follower, but with it I could determine the ADSR of a parameter once it's triggered. Now, similar to a compressor, we could set a threshold to determine when the ADSR is triggered. Then we can change the attack, the decay, sustain, hold, and release. We could also change if the slopes are logarithmic or exponential. Now this effect works a little better for creative effects. For example, say I want distortion to increase, hold, and then quickly drop down. This won't sound natural, but it might have a cool sound. Let's try it out so you know what I'm talking about. Creating a basic drive effect. This effect is a little simpler, but it's really useful. So say I want a traditional drive effect, I'd first create a slider and attach it to my input with a positive value, then my output with a negative value. So when I increase the slider's value, more signal is being run into the saturator. It's then compensated for by lowering the output. This creates a slightly more analog sound than simply increasing the drive dial. If I want this to be program dependent, I could do the same thing, but with an envelope follower. Let's try it out with the slider for now and notice how controlling multiple parameters at once can be used for really specific effects. Today's video is brought to you by Editor's Keys, a developer of shortcut keyboards and keyboard covers. Now, since I use Logic Pro, I could try their wireless keyboard that showcases all of Logic Pro's shortcuts on the buttons. Or, if I wanted to keep the keyboard that I already have, I could try one of the covers designed to fit whichever computer I'm using. They also have keyboards and covers for Ableton, FL Studio, Pro Tools, and more, as well as ones designed for video and editing software. So check them out using the link in the description. Introducing Stereo Imaging with Saturn Now one of my favorite things to do with Saturn is introduce stereo imaging. In the output section, I'll enable mid-side processing. Now I can pan a band, my drive or distortion, or my input or output to mid or side, if I'm affecting a stereo signal. So first, let's create some bands to isolate the distortion into four frequency ranges. Then I'll create an envelope follower, like I did with the drums in Chapter 4. I'll attach it to the drive and the drive pan dials for each band. For the lows and the high mids around the vocals, I'll have the drive pan toward the mid image by using a negative value, making it more centered. For the low mids and the highs, I'll have it pan toward the side image to expand the stereo image in these regions. Or, if I wanted a creative effect, what I could do is insert this XLFO, I'll set the oscillation to a half note and attach it to the band's overall pan. This is going to oscillate the imaging between the mid and the side. I could determine how it does this by adding and affecting the steps within the LFO. Let's take a listen to this effect, first with the envelope follower enabled, and then I'll enable the LFO later on. If you're enjoying the channel, use the search box to watch more of our videos. Tying multiple effects together. If you want to tie multiple effects together but in a more complex way, I'd recommend trying the XY modulator. Whereas the slider offers two main options, either up or down, XY offers four. Positive X and Y, negative X and Y, positive X, negative Y, negative X, positive Y. So say I want the drive dial and the drive pan to be linked, I could set a positive value on the drive and a negative one on the panning to make it more mid-oriented. Now as I move the cursor around, 
we'll notice how the relationship between the two changes. For a creative effect, let's also link the X and the Y the same way to my input and output panning. Let's take a listen to this being modulated. Oversampling and linear phase. You might have noticed the linear phase and the quality functions at the bottom, so let's briefly discuss those. The quality function is oversampling, either 8x oversampling or 32x with good or superb respectively. Now linear phase introduces linear phase processing to any band crossovers, but not to the EQ or the tone. It also automatically enables 8x oversampling, even though it strangely doesn't show this in the quality tab. Oversampling is great when you're distorting high frequencies. If we were to run a high frequency sine wave through the processor and aggressively distort it, we'll notice foldback or aliasing distortion. This is going to be reduced significantly with 8x oversampling and almost completely removed with 32x. As for the linear phase, this is best used when you're mastering. It's going to reduce phase cancellation between any crossovers and helps us improve the quality when varying the mix style value. Although this is going to be subtle, let's take a listen to the processor on a full mix and enable linear phase and higher quality over sampling to see if we notice a difference. Putting ideas into practice. So to tie all these ideas together, I want to create a complex effect using everything that we've discussed so far, which I'll explain as I go. Now first, I'm going to create four bands with 12 dB per octave crossovers and select the distortion type that I think sounds best on each range. I'm going to create a slider and attach it to the input and the output with a positive and negative value respectively to create the drive effect that we discussed in chapter 6. Next, I'll switch the processing to mid-side before creating an envelope follower. I'll attach this generator to the output pan on my highest band with a positive value so that it expands the stereo image. Then I'll lower the range slider to make the effect subtler. Next, I'll create an envelope follower and set it to transient mode. Then I'll link it to the drive dials of my various bands as well as to the drive pan of my bands using negative values to pan towards the mid and positive ones to expand. I'll also slightly increase the dynamic dial on my low mids and then link the follower using a negative value to bring it back to unity whenever a transient hits. With an LFO set to a half note and linked to my crossovers, I'll modulate the frequency range of my high mid band, causing its settings to dynamically affect frequencies above and below it. Next, I'll create an XY controller and link it to some tone sliders. I'll set the Y value to a higher frequency and the X to a lower using positive and negative ranges respectively. Now this way, I can determine if they both increase or decrease, or if one increases while the other decreases. Let's take a listen to this effect with linear phase and oversampling enabled to reduce phase cancellation and aliasing distortion. If you have a mix that you need to have mastered, send it to us to receive a free mastered sample of it with the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching.